seller, orgasm, blush, lipstick, giga seller, devil in a tight dress, girl, you a killer, and ain't nobody realer, and ain't nobody realer, go, go, go. Hey, y'all. It's Ashley reporting live from the car. I'm at Sam's Club. I'm about to run some errands um, for my salon. And I just wanted to pop in and um, share a couple things with you guys and show y'all something. So, um, I usually buy um, everything in bulk for my life. Like, if I can buy it in bulk, I'm going to buy it in bulk because it's cheaper. So, like, I'm going to Sam's Club. I get things for my business. Um, I get water. I have complimentary water, wine, um, hot chocolate and hot tea in my salon but then i also sell snacks um so one of the things is i always look for a way to market to the audience that i already um interact with so um i know i always have what my clients need so i have um snacks food um uh, not food different vendors come through i mean different um, business owners come through and they sell food so that's uh, also accommodation when my clients come if you hungry you running late it's cool it's like doordash all the time because somebody's gonna be coming around hey do you want this whatever um it's not obsessive like you know where somebody's constantly coming into our space trying to sell or provide something but um it is a nice flow and it's a nice way to you know meet different people but anyway that's not what i'm talking about um i'm here because um like i said i buy things in bulk and um it saves money and that's what you want to do when you're in business so for me everything is a numbers game how many i can get in the amount of time and um you know how much for a cheaper price that's what i want to do i want to always make sure i spend less so that I sh it shows more profit so i buy my products in bulk like everything so um i go in here so th some of the things going to be on my list today are you know um I'll show you but um cleaning supplies like i said the water the, the snacks and stuff i make a lot of money on snacks i make a lot of money selling products so that's why i like you know to have those things available so um i also needed to wash my own hair because i'm tired of wearing wigs um i just wanted to have my own hair and it's about to be the summertime so i just wanted to be you know um blowing in the wind but i wanted to color my hair i was over this red and so um i got my semi-permanent color on up under my wig y'all i know it's so ghetto but i love it <laughs> and i was like you know i needed this to sit and i didn't really want to sit under the dryer and all of that so i put my wig on on top of there and this y'all my wig is so busted i just snatched it up off the chair i was in a wedding yesterday and it looked really nice but you know and then i'm gonna put my hood up and you know i'm cute and nobody knows that i got color or you can have your conditioner or whatever while you're wearing errands that's what i love about wigs so it's not like i don't have my own hair or it's not like i don't like my own hair it's more sometimes the wigs are just more convenient and if you want to look nice really quick and you know change your whole look up or whatever you can do that so you know it's still covid so people wearing their masks so i still can be cute in my outfit i got on a suede hoodie some pleather tights some um combat boots my wig and my oops and a pair of earrings and of course you know you're gonna have your mask on so you can still be cute and, and comfortable while you run your errands but yeah um that's that just wanted to share that with you um i'll show you some of the things that i'm getting in sam's that i find saves money and we'll talk about numbers and stuff like that um and i also always compare um bulk prices to what you get in like walmart and stuff like that so like you'll see as i go in here the number of trash bags that i get by coming to sam's it like I, I don't have to do buy it as frequently because it comes so many for a much cheaper price but yeah the object of the game is to spend less and um, receive more so i'm always working on those things and yeah so if you got questions if you want to find out some other ways or i can you know definitely explain more how i what things I focus on when it comes to numbers. So um, I'll give you drop this one little thing too as a small business owner. So I always compare my business to my last job. My last full-time job, I was assistant principal when I lived in Baton Rouge. And I think about the lifestyle I lived with the income that I had coming in and I'm trying to model that with my business, but um, on a much grander scale and spending less time. Like I, t to me, freedom is not in dollars it's in time but if i can have money that get, frees up my time that's you know residual income i'll have more so that's what i'm chasing not chasing but that's what all of my 
goals align to for your time so I can do the things that I really want to do not necessarily be at work doing work or whatever except when I want to um but yeah so like with clients I count how many how much money did you uh, make this month but how many days and hours did you work so yeah you might have came in with a fat check but if you spent 80 hours at the shop you ain't really make no money so you know that's what I want to still be able to work out I want to still be able to um, make wigs I still want to be able to do all those things so I have to cut down on how much time I spend in the salon so that's why I focus on buying things in bulk so I can spend less on products because that takes my overhead costs down to a much lower level. So when I estimate the price of my services, I think about all the additions and things like that. Um, no, every client may not um, utilize all of the amenities, but it doesn't matter. They're still there. So I have things like, like I said, I have um, refreshments. I have a back massager. I have a foot massager. I have a head massager. I have a um, high grade steamer. Um, I have natural products. I have an aloe plant in there. So if my clients get cut, so they have anything going on with their skin, you can have a piece of aloe, you know, <clears throat> excuse me. I teach them about everything that I learn about the body and, you know, all of those things, too. So you're also being educated as I'm being educated. So you have to account for all of that. So, you know, some people, when I did a price increase, they were thinking like, you know, oh, that's too expensive. And it might be, which is cool because we have, you know, Walmart and you have designers. Both both companies are getting their money. You just got to figure out your target audience. So that person may not be in my target audience. But when I calculate my price, I think about how much money I spent on um, education and things like that this year. How, how many mannequins did I buy to practice color? How many boxes of color did I, pra did I buy to improve my color skills? How many videos did I watch? How many one-on-one -on -one classes did I take? I do all of that so I factor that into my price so um, that's how I, I work but it it can be if you pay less for your supplies more of your price goes towards your um, service and experience because you do have to charge for that too um, and I uh, watch a lot of you know videos read a lot of stuff and one of the things that the guy was saying um, he was like when you say you're the best at something he said how can you say you're the best but you're the cheapest and I was like oh I'm sorry, y'all. I'm picking off my nail. Um, these are this week's press-ons minus one. I wore these yesterday for my uncle's wedding, and yes, my cuticles they jack, but I do have. Hmm. Um, I am trying to work on taking care of myself as a person more because I can say the last three years of building my business, I really cut back on myself. So I'm trying to marry those two things back together. Um, I cut down on my self-care because I'm a a feel good type of woman like I like to feel good I like to look good and I had to budget and I also had to budget time a budget finances and time with those things and so taking care of myself was something I threw to the wayside because I'm like okay not only do you have to work as a um, small business owner but you also have to put in your time so for me I think back to like um I was telling y'all about my old job too. Like I factor in how many hours did I have to work and things like that. So I, I had to budget in time for other things as well. Like when you, I was telling you guys about my old job. So you, I, one of the other things I also factor into my business is how many things I had to do outside of working there. So usually you just do your 40 hours and you done at most, you know, careers or whatever. But for me, I had to balance paperwork and stuff like that too taxes in, in your you know all of your the clerical things you got to put time in for that as well so i had to balance out okay are you making enough money to accommodate this time too because are you technically just charging or just making enough money uh just for your working hours that you're physically working but what about those other hours so you got to think about all of that in, within your business too um and so how do you you don't want to and, and if you feel like that that price point isn't work for your target or your current audience is now then how do you supplement that and that's how i do other things like that's why i do weddings that's why i do wigs um or i kind of cut down on weddings but i still do them for my friends or whatever and that brings in income i do surveys um i have lupus so one of my friends always but uh, she's in the uh, medical field she'll put me on she'll be like hey this place, they got a survey they paid me 125 dollars to talk to me for 30 minutes about lupus something i can do for a long time so that's the way i supplement you know or <clears throat> 
putting together ebooks like I just put together a journal for another project um, and I'm gonna focus more on more hair related ones I have coming out too so that's generating more income to supplement for myself because the goal is to have more freedom um, more time you know to do other stuff um, so yeah I'm done rambling I hope that helps and like I said I'm about to go to Sam's <clears throat> I can talk to you about, you know, numbers in that sense too. And just some things to think about. Um, that's the stuff that was in my mind. Like entrepreneurship, like I, I had the cake before I had the ingredients. Uh how things transitioned into my life, I just kinda like had to jump into it. So now I'm having to reverse um engineer and uh I guess that's the right way to say it, I'm not sure, but go start back with the the basics. I'm building a foundation starting with my business plan. Um my uh what's it called order process your, your process your, your process is like what does it take to run your business if you couldn't do it today could you hand somebody a, a manual to say here this is how to run my business in my absence so just working on those things because right now i'm a one-man team i'm not necessarily a business owner i'm self-employed because if i don't do nothing ain't nothing happening and that's not how i want my business to be um so yeah those are just some things that are on my mind, stuff that I'm going through, trying to, you know, reorganize because I'm 36 right now. I'm in a new field career-wise. Like, I've been doing hair since I was a little girl, um, and I've been licensed since 2006, but this is my first time in business and full-time as a hairstylist. So, the learning curve is for real huge, you know what I mean? Um, we're, we're so used to your job providing everything for you. I had to get my own insurance uh, for my, I had to get insurance for my salon, insurance for my personal self, life insurance for myself, short-term disability insurance for myself. Um, just stuff. You'd be like, and then you got to pay your, whatever you have your business listed under your LLC, your corporation, you got to pay those yearly fees. Um, then you get fines if you don't pay that stuff on time. I had to pay for my cosmetology license for myself and my salon has to have a license as well. And you get fined if you don't pay them on time. Like, it's a lot of stuff. So, like, this one, like, you got to include time for the clerical. Like, you just, you, you, you're you not just doing hair or whatever your business is, you're not just doing that. We're accustomed to being in corporate or of a job that already does the thinking for you. It's not like that when you for yourself. So, you know, that's something... Um, hopefully that fan wasn't too loud, but that's something that I'm working on trying to fix, you know, for myself, um, and improve in my business and, you know, help my other fellow business owners along the way, like think it through, come up with a plan. If you, and if you watching this and you, uh, are want to leave, leave your nine to five, do the grunt work first, find out exactly how much it's going to take you to function as your business as its own individual self do not pair it with your regular life see how much it's going to cost for your business to function by itself and then you also need to see how much it's going to cost for you to function by yourself and if your business isn't doing generating enough income that you can take care of the business and itself then you need to rethink your plan so you're going to go through phases where like everybody was like oh it's going to take you a long time to um like five years that was what they told me like it's going to take you like five years to see if your business strong and can hang in or you can survive it ain't gonna take you that because i feel like my business has grown significantly in the last couple of years, um, in the last year, I would say I saw a, a very large um, change in my business in one year. So it's about how intentional you are and how foolproof your plan is. If you got a plan, like you're not going to fail with it at all. Um, so, yeah, work on your plan. Have your money stashed up. Know how, Know what you need just in case things are slow. And, you know, have a marketing budget. Oh, my God have a marketing budget have an accountant to help you with your money and your books until you learn how to do that stuff by yourself because that is what makes businesses crumble because the business owner is stressed and unorganized um and i outsource i'm a pay for convenience type person so if i'm not good at something i'm gonna pay somebody that is to be able to you know do handle my business and stuff like that in that particular area of course you supervise but i'm not gonna stress myself out taking days months years to do something that you can do in five minutes because this is what you do i'm just gonna pay you for your time and know that it's of high quality and go forward but yeah that's just some of the things that goes into a small business because everybody's always like you're so busy you're right 
Lizzie's. And, you know, I'm just trying to get more organized. And, and if I could help somebody along the way to think of some things on the front end, so you don't got to be like me on the back end, do that. And bye. Okay, so here's another example. If you check out these Sam Members Mark um, trash bags, you get 200 trash bags for 17 bucks. You see, they actually do the math for you. You're paying nine cents per trash bag. Like, you can't beat it. And it's going to last you so much longer than buying a smaller pack in the grocery store for about seven or eight bucks.